All right, uh, crypto class. So this is going to be a video describing how to put together our Enigma machine. So let me kind of go through the basic parts. So you're going to need two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pieces that look like this. And this is going to be our flange piece. You're also going to need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pieces that look like this. Um, this is the female connector. You're also going to need eight pieces that look like this. This is the male connector. You're going to need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pieces that look like this. This is the inner base. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pieces that look like this. This is a slightly different sized um, inner base. So, and we'll distinguish between these two in, in the piles you have to get. So you're also going to need one piece of the uh, PVC pipe. You're going to need five of the wide cord cardboard strips and three of the narrower cardboard strips. And you're going to need three pieces of the cut foam of the narrow size and five of the slightly wider size. And again, uh, it's kind of hard to just visually to look and realize that this one's narrower. If I could actually put them side by side, you'll realize this one's just a little bit taller, um, but we'll have them in different piles so you won't have any confusion there. All right, so, oh, you're also gonna need some glue and we'll supply some, some glue as well. Um, you're also gonna need the actual wired labels and there's going to be a total of eight of these so there's um, a rotor one, a rotor two, a rotor three, a rotor four, a rotor five there are two reflectors and a plug board and again we'll have this all piled up so you guys won't have to be scrambling around looking for different pieces um, so let me show you in the end what it should really look like essentially we're going to be building pieces that look like this. And we're going to take these pieces and slide them onto the PVC pipe and then they interlock with each other and they twist around and, and mesh nicely. So that's the idea. But we have to build these pieces first. So let me go through the steps of what you do to build these pieces. Alright, so the first thing that we need to do is take one of the flanges and if you'll notice, uh, if you look really carefully there's a notch on part of the rim on the flange and there's also a line underneath if you don't see the line then flip it over and you'll see the line so it's important to get the lines lined up so we're going to take one of the flanges and then take one of the male connectors and the idea is that the male connector is going to line up perfectly with the circle there and the line there like that. Now what I recommend to actually do the lining up to keep everything perfect is we have to glue this, these two pieces together. So in order to do that, what I recommend is take your PVC pipe and actually put, put it on ahead of time like this and it'll keep things nice and centered. And what we're going to do is, before I actually put the other one on, I'm going to put some glue, it's a little bit hard for me to do it one-handed, so I'm going to put the camera down for a second, but you're going to put some glue around the base, and then we're going to put this piece on and make sure that the lines line up with each other. So um, let me go ahead and pause it so I can grab some glue and do that. So as you can see, I put some glue on the flange piece, and now I'm going to put that, put the male connector down through the middle. And I realized as I did it, I actually should have put the glue on the male connector, not on the flange piece. Because see how it's oozing out? That's bad. I'm going to have to clean that out. So I, I kind of missed the area of the radius of the inner piece. So when we do it for real, so we're going to make sure that we put the glue actually on the smaller piece, not on the bigger piece. All right, so I pushed down on the two pieces, uh, kind of pinching them together, and notice I got the alignment between the lines. That's really important, and I put it on the pole. And I also wiped off any excess glue, so I used a paper towel over there and wiped off the excess glue, because you really don't want any glue sticking out, because otherwise the connection is going to get sticky. Now, it probably takes about a good 10 minutes for that glue to dry. This isn't the super glue, this is just the regular tacky glue. So I'm going to put this off to the side, maybe give it last push down for good measure and move on to the next piece we have to glue together. All right, so while this male piece dries, we're now gonna to go to the female piece. 
But now this is important. So here's the female piece. You're not actually gonna glue the female piece to that. You're gonna glue the female piece to the inner base. So we're gonna take the inner base here. That's one of these sort of, they're thicker and they're darker. So I'm gonna take that, put this one, and this one you can just kind of squeeze together with your hand. You don't need to put it on the, the, the white PVC tube to get things aligned. It'll just kind of naturally align when you squeeze it like this. But we do need to make sure that not only is the hole aligned, but this notch with the line right here matches with this line that's right here. So we need to make sure that these are lined up like so. Um, now, in reality, for this particular one, this particular configuration of pieces, they actually don't need to line up. This is a perfectly symmetric piece. So if you mess up this one, it's not the end of the world, but it's a good idea to actually practice to keeping things aligned. Because for other pieces, like for example, the male, it, it really is actually gonna be important. So, all right. So let's go ahead and glue these together. And this time I'm gonna be smart and I'm gonna glue, put the glue on the smaller piece first and then stick that onto the bigger one. So let me go ahead and I have to put the camera down for a second to do that. All right, so I have glue here, and now I'm gonna take it and put it onto the wheel. So when I pushed it down, a little bit of glue, you'll notice, oozed out a little bit right here. So I'm gonna take a paper towel and kind of clean that up a little bit because you don't want any glue sticking out. All right, so I cleared off some of the XX glue by just kind of dabbing it with the uh, paper towel right there, and I sort of squeeze the rims of this together so that keeps everything nice and aligned and notice that uh, the lines here line up although it wasn't strictly necessary for this case but all right so and I'm kind of pushing down on it also be careful when you push down to press to get it together you don't accidentally twist anything that's an easy mistake that can happen so you want to keep everything aligned so while this dries I'm going to put this off to the side and go back to this piece which is now it's been it's 10 minutes so it should be all dried and stuck together nicely. So now we're gonna glue another piece to this one. All right, so we've got the male piece which is all glued together. Now to the other side of the male piece, we're gonna glue on one of these inner, inner bases. So I'm gonna grab one of these inner bases here and you'll notice it also has the line with the notch. So we're gonna go ahead and line these up it's a little bit, again, it doesn't matter so much for the back, but again, just for consistency's sake, I like to line everything up. So it's going to look like, put this on here. It's going to look something like this. So the notches all kind of line up. Um, but in order to get it to be perfect, we're going to put it on the PVC tube again, because this one we can't just squeeze and get it to align correctly. So let me go get that PVC tubing, which will end up being a part of the Enigma machine anyway. And put this onto the PVC tube like so, like that. And I'm gonna put the glue on the smaller piece, which is this one this time. So that takes two hands. Let me put the camera down for a sec. Okay, so I put the glue on this inner wheel. And I tried to make sure when I put the glue that I wasn't too close to the inner hole or the outer rim. So that way it shouldn't squish out too much when I push it down. So now I'm gonna go ahead and glue this to this. I'm going to put it on like so. Again, this takes two hands, so bear with me. And I realized after I did it that I actually glued the wrong side. So, uh, I mean, it's nothing disastrous, but if I glued the proper side, we'd actually see the line right here. So I don't see the line, but the notch matches up. And again, it's actually not that relevant for the inner wheels. It's really only important for the actual connector pieces that they're sort of in phase. But um, So it's not like a disastrous mess up. But I'm kind of pinching this, holding it, squeezing it closed. All right, squeezing it closed around the pipe so everything's lined up nicely. And I'm going to go ahead and use both hands to pull it off the pipe. Okay, I actually discovered I pulled it off the pipe a wee bit too early. When I pulled it off, the glue wasn't quite dry, and in the act of pulling it off, it actually slid the thing around a little bit so it wasn't quite aligned anymore. So actually, I should have kept it on the pipe for maybe another minute or two before I yanked it off. Or at least when you yank it off, be very careful when you're pulling it off. Don't like grab it here and then accidentally twist like I did accidentally. So all right, so you've got the male piece, which looks like this, and our female piece, which should be dry now. Yep, looks like this. So the next step after you've got your male and female pieces glued together is to actually you take the foam. Now the foam that you want is the thicker foam. So the thick foam is used for the rotors 
The thin foam is used for the reflectors and plug boards. So if you're building a rotor, I'm going to do a rotor the first time, and there's five different rotors, that's why there's five thick ones. Then for the two reflectors and the plug board, those use the skinnier foams. So um, we're going to build a rotor the first time, so we're going to use the thicker foam right here. And now this is really important, and if you mess this up, it's, it's really bad. So you'll basically have to throw away that piece, which is, or at least try to take it apart, which is going to be really difficult when it's glued. So the important bit is the male part has to go on the right, the female part has to go on the left. It's the only way things are going to fit together right. Um, so just remember, males on the right, females on the left. It's like males are always right. Okay, just kidding. All right, so um, so the way we're going to do this is there's going to be a piece of foam in between these. So it's going to look something like like this. Um, again, we're going to keep it aligned by putting it on the wheel. Now, one thing we've noticed, ideally, this would actually all be glued together. We've actually had pretty limited success trying to glue the foam. The foam just doesn't seem to glue, glue very well just because it's so porous. Um, I'm going to go ahead and try. I'm going to put some glue around here and some glue around here, and then we'll put things together. Um, like I said, I haven't had a lot of success with it, but we'll, I mean, figure it can't hurt, right? So, all right, so let me grab my glue bottle and put, actually, I'm going to go ahead and put it on the PVC pipe first. So, I'm going to sliding the male piece on first. This is going to be the, the right part. And I'm going to take the foam and put that on top. But before I put it on top, I'm going to put some glue around here and try to stick the foam to it. It's not very effective, but it's better than nothing. By the way, be very careful when you do this not to actually get any glue on the PVC piping because then you won't be able to remove the rotors and you want the rotors to be movable and interchangeable. So I put some glue around there, being careful to avoid too close to the rim or too close to the PVC pipe. And I'm going to take the foam and squish that on there. So I should mention the, the foam's been cut. So that way it'll fit a little bit more flexibly around the, around the pipe because it's like a little bit of a wider, a little more play, which is good. Otherwise it's too tight on the pole. So I've put the foam down through the pipe. Notice that the split kind of widens a bit so it's not too tight of a fit. And I'm squishing it down on there, trying to get the glue to take. Like I said, we haven't had a whole lot of success with it, but I'll give it a minute or two there. So. Um, while we wait for that, I can take the glue and put it on the female end and then put the female end down and try to squish that and just kind of squeeze them together. Now here's the important bit. So you want to line this up ahead of time. The notch on the female part, so you can see the, where is it? Get a close up of it. Do it. So you can see the notch and the line right there have to line up with the notch that we have here. It's a little bit hard to see on the camera, but there's a line right there. Those have to line up. Otherwise, your rotor gears are not going to be in phase with each other, and that would be bad. So um, kind of eyeball it. So put the glue on, kind of eyeball it. But then before you stick it on permanently, make sure that those lines are lined up. In fact, if I had to do it over again, what I would actually do to help us line it up is maybe take this part, it's too late because I already glued it, but maybe for the next rotor, I would take this top edge part of that and line that up with the notch. So that way it'll be easy, much easier to visually see where the, the notch is, because you'll see it's where the split of that is. But too late, I didn't do it. So actually, maybe the glue isn't dry yet. Maybe I can still twist it. Let me see if I can switch it. Yeah, actually, the glue did absolutely nothing. I've been squeezing it, but, oh, yeah. So I'm lining it up right now. Yeah, it, it was so, even after I was pushing it and holding it for several minutes, uh, I'm convinced the gluing the foam to the wood is just, we're just going to skip that step. It just doesn't do anything. So what I did was I actually did line up the notch here to line up with this edge here so that when I put this on, and I was saying before, oh, let's glue it to the foam. That's actually useless. I'm not going to glue it to the foam. It doesn't stick. But I'm going to go ahead and put this on here and line up, line up this notch with this notch here by aligning it with the pink part right here. So now you can see the notch there. So here's the line with the notch. 
totally lines up with this and with that. All right. All right, since the glue isn't going to work, but we don't want this kind of rotating willy-nilly because we need all these notches to line up, I think what I do is just for the moment, I'm going to put a piece of tape here just to hold these together. So I'm going to actually grab so a new supply we need for the classroom, some masking tape. So let me take a piece of masking tape just so I can temporarily hold these two together in alignment. So let me do that. So here's what I did is I just put a piece of tape across here so it touches this part of the wood, goes across the foam and touches this part of the wood just to make sure that the notches stay aligned. Um, normally there's going to be a piece of cardboard wrapped around that's going to do that, but until we put the cardboard on I don't want it sliding out of alignment. So that's why I did that there. Now we're ready actually for the cardboard step. So let me explain what we're going to do. You're going to take, because we're making a rotor instead of a reflector or plug board, we're going to use the thicker piece of cardboard. Again, unless you get them side by side, you don't realize that one is actually wider than the other. Um, yeah, when I say thicker, I really mean wider. Thickness-wise, they're all the same thickness, but wideness-wise is where they're different. So we're going to use the wider one. And what we're going to do is, is a little bit hard to explain with one hand, but I will try to do it. Let's see. So you're going to take your hand, one of your hands, and hold it against the table with the cardboard like this. And you're going to take the other hand, and you're going to pull down with the other hand on this. And what that's going to do is put a natural curl to the cardboard. So it turns out we tried various ways of trying to do this, and this is the way that works the best. If you just try to do it with your fingers, like try wrapping this around your fingers, it causes creases and things get bumpy and things don't turn right. So the best way to do it, see if I can try to hold the phone with my chin. Uh, this isn't going to work. So, but I'm going to grab here, the other hand here. Yeah, I can't do this. So, but I think you guys get the idea. You just have one hand holding here, the other hand is holding here, and you're going to pull this down, and it's going to, as it goes across the table, it's going to make a natural curve. And you do that both directions. After you do it once, you turn around and do it the other side. So let me go ahead and do that, and you'll see what it looks like. See, after we did this, it sort of has a natural curl to it without any, like, creases or hard, not differentiable cusps or anything like that. So it's all just kind of nice like that. And we did that by, again, just pulling it down over the table like that and just did that a couple times in different directions. So, all right, so now we've got this curved piece of cardboard. So what we're going to do is before I actually do the gluing, so you want one edge of the cardboard to line up with those notches. And we're going to wrap the cardboard going around the thing. Now, it's not quite going to make it. It's a little bit shy, so we did this on purpose. So after that little bit of clap, you're going to use the masking tape to kind of hold it together. So, um, But before we do that, we actually have to put glue around the rim, just kind of nestle in the glue. And this is why we made this flange. We discovered that if we make this kind of sticky out bit, everything kind of nestles in nicely. So you want the glue on the dark part of the wood here. And it's going to be going around here and the same thing on the other side. Now this one doesn't have the flange, but that's okay. Really only need the flange on one side because it helps align the cardboard. So you're going to put the glue here, some glue on that side, and then we're going to wrap the cardboard around here. Now this is pretty much impossible to do with one hand. Um, but one thing I want to point out is when we have it, when you're doing it, I should arrange it so the male's on the right. So when you do it, you're going to be pushing the cardboard against this raised area, against that flange, and um, it should, should work out nicely. So, all right, so let me go ahead and do that. I have to use my other hand. So I'm not sure if you can see, but there's actually glue going all the way around the dark parts now. Of that side, it's a little blurry, it's out of focus there, but yeah, you can kind of see the glue glistening. So I'm going to wrap the cardboard around. And you also want to notice that notice I started, I'm kind of holding it with my thumb so it doesn't unravel. Um, but notice I started right on the notch. Right? So, it, so it, and there's a little bit of a gap there. We're going to end up uh, taping that together. So I'm going to actually do that right now. Let me put the phone down. So remember to be pressing the edges where the glue is so it'll be nice and glued to the, uh, the wood. And uh, also try to keep the push the cardboard up so it's flush with the flange and it should match if we get all the measurements properly it should kind of match perfectly with the other side right there so it should basically be flush 
and you will have a little bit of a gap between here, but that's okay because that's going to be covered up when we actually put the wirings on, which I'm just going to give it a minute or two to uh, dry to the wood, and then we'll put the wirings on. All right, so I gave it a few minutes for the glue to dry. So this is what it looks like right now. And now I grabbed one of the rotor pieces. So this happens to be rotor one. If you can see with the focus, but this is rotor number one. So again, here the alignment's really important. If you'll notice for the rotors, let me do a close up of this. Where the A is, right underneath the A, there's this gray line right here. So that gray line needs to line up with the notch that you made right here. And again, just to double check, make sure the male end is on the right, female end on the left. Line up the gray line with the notch, like so. The gray line is hard to tell because of the light, but the gray line is lined up with the notch. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap this around. Now, when you wrap it around, this is actually on sticky contact paper. So I'm going to peel this off, and that's going to make it sticky, and then I'm going to wrap it around. But I can't do that one-handed, so I'm going to put this down so we can do it. So this is what I mean by the contact paper. So there's actually a little diagonal scoring mark here. We didn't actually make that, the paper comes that way. And you peel it across. Ugh, can't do it one-handed. So I'm peeling this out. I like to do it half and half. So I just peel off one half first, leave the other half on, and I peeled off the, the A part first, and let me go ahead and line that up. Again, I just want to point out that here's the gray line, and it's lined up with the notch. I can't get it focused really well, but it's lined up with the notch, and you're always pushing the tape to be flush against the flange. So always be kind of pushing it this way. It'll get everything to be kind of nice and straight and aligned. When you get to the stage where you're out of stickum, uh, just start peeling off the next half. So I can't do it one-handed, but there we go. I got it peeled off. So now I'm going to continue wrapping it around. Again, I'm pushing this way towards the flange to keep it nice and flush. Also make sure that the letters of the alphabet are next to the female end and the wirings with the, with the dots are heading towards the male end. So it should look like this. If you put it on upside down, uh, you're screwed. <laughs> it's messed up. And we only have so many of these little uh, rotor things. We don't have enough replacements. So try not to mess up. I actually did mess up once, and it is possible if you're real, real careful to peel it away from the cardboard. But hopefully that won't have to happen. So when you get to the very end, so this one messed up a little bit. So maybe not enough that's going to make a huge difference. But it should be that when you finish up, you come pretty close to that gray line. This one's off by like a couple millimeters or so. Um, but it should still be close enough. So because it messed up a little bit, the spacing between A and Z is slightly more than the spacing between A and B. So when we actually start attaching the other rotors, we might have to be a little bit careful there. Um, but for the most part, it looks pretty good. And this spins around the pole pretty easily. And what the female and male parts do is they kind of lock the pieces into place. So that way they don't jiggle you know, unnecessarily when you don't want them to jiggle. So when you do want them to move, you just kind of grab it by the flange, that's why it sticks up a little bit, pull it out a little bit, give it a little twist, push it back in. So, all right, well that's the idea. We now have one complete rotor. I'm gonna pull it off the pole so you can see what it looks like when it's complete. So there we go. There's the female end, the male end, the rotor. So there's what a rotor piece looks like and we just need to build a total of five of these. This is rotor number one, and there's going to be a total of five rotors. So I'm going to turn the camera off and then come back after I have built all five of them. All right, so as you can see, the five rotors are complete. And I also have it all with the male end up, and so the letters are all on the bottom, and female end is there. So um, the five rotors are done. We know these are rotors because, well, they say rotor on them and they've got wires coming out of the letters. So basically the reflectors, which say reflector on them and don't have letters, and the plug board, which has letters but no wiring, they're done exactly the same way, except that you're gonna use the thinner piece of cardboard and the thinner pieces of foam. But other than that, they're put together exactly the same way. So I'm gonna do those three and then we'll put it all together. Oh. Uh, also, I should point out, when you do the reflectors, since you don't have the alphabet to go by to know right from left, 
the um, the area without the wires, the kind of white area that doesn't connect to anything, that is the female end. And then the, the male end is the one with the nodes and the wires all coming out. So that is the orientation that it has to be in. And also when you're lining up the, um, the notches, so since you don't have a gray line this time, instead of the gray line, you're going to line up the bottom of that gray stripe with the notch. And if you can see the notch right there, it's pretty good so you can see it there. So there's the notch, and it lines up with the bottom of the gray bar, and then the same thing on the other side there. So again, male side is the one with the wires and the nodes, female sign, female side, nothing there. It's also important to note that when you're done wrapping around, the gray side doesn't actually get covered up. So you might think, oh, the gray gets covered up, but actually doesn't. So theoretically, this is off by a little bit, like most of them are, but theoretically, this edge should match up with the bottom of the uh, gray bar. This one falls short by, again, a little bit, a few millimeters, um, but it should still be should still be legible when we do the uh, Enigma machine with the rotors. And the very last piece to assemble is the plug board. There's also something called the ring at the right edge of the plug board. Um, we don't really need to worry too much about that. We're not going to do too much with that with this in this course. But uh, I just want to notice with the plug board, so the bottom of the gray stripe does actually have like a little gray line there. And we're lining that up with the notch on the male end. So the ring portion that we're not really going to be actively using goes on the male end. And then the ones with the the nodes uh, goes on the female end, and again, the bottom of the gray stripe lines up with the notch right there, and we just swirl that one around for our final piece. So in the end, now that all our pieces are done, I actually have it assembled so you can sort of see what the final product looks like. So the plug board goes here on the rightmost end, oriented like this, and you're going to have, and then your teacher may do something different. I mean, you could actually write in the numbers here for what matches with what with the different cables. I'm actually going to have my students keep track on a separate piece of paper rather than actually um, vandalizing their nice plug board by writing on it. Or you could write on it lightly with pencil and erase it afterwards, uh, however your teacher wants to do it. And then you've got these movable rotors. You can take them out. Um, so this particular rotor order is in the order 5, 1, Two. So you don't actually use all the rotors at one time. So the other spare rotors are back here that we're not using, but the code for the day might say, all right, use rotors 5, 1, and 2 in that particular order. Um, and then you have a particular reflector. So I'm using reflector C, and that's the end right here on the leftmost end. Um, when you're ready, it's kind of hard to do it one-handed, but um, when you're ready to actually rotate, you would uh, grab this piece, pull it out a little bit, because right now they're, they're locked in together. Um, so they won't like jiggle around or anything like that. So uh, when you're ready to actually do a rotation, you know, I'll separately let me pause it for a second. So I don't know if you can see here, but I pulled out the um, rightmost rotor a little bit from the rest. There's a little bit of a gap here that there wasn't there before. And this is much easier to do two-handed. I just can't do it one-handed, so I can't show you as I'm actually doing this. I have to hold the camera. But uh, then you'd hold the flange and you would rotate this down. So notice that right now the M, if I follow the the wire, so here it was like, oh, J connected to M, which connected to O, and it did that. It's actually going to go and connect to, I'd have to turn it and go around, go around the reflector, come all the way back, blah, 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 then see at the end, and then do a little switch with the plug board if necessary. But I just want to show, and then after that, you would click this gear one time. And uh, let me show you what it looks like when you click the gear. I'm going to have to pause it for one second. But notice that right now, the M is going to the O. But I just went ahead and rotated it down a little bit. So now, if you'll see, and then I, and I pushed it back together. So again, that, the method is just kind of pull it apart just like a wee little bit, and then click it back in so it stays. And you'll see now, the next time it goes through, when you push it, it's going to go through and connect to something else over here. So, um, and then when it goes all the way around, um, and again you could set the ring so it clicks off at a different time, so normally you're just turning this one, but then after it goes all the way around 26 times, then you'd go ahead and click this one. And your teacher can explain more about how to actually use the, 
the plug board and the rotors, but that's the mechanics of how you actually put the machine together. So I uh, hope you guys enjoy, and happy enciphering and deciphering, and tomorrow we can actually crack this.